So good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. Uh, it's nice seeing you. Yeah, thank you so much for talking to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, can we start off with uh, talking about uh, when you bought your wonderful modern house <laughs> and how old your kids were when you first moved in? Mm -hmm. And uh, is that is there anything that uh, motivated you to get the house in the first place? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'll be happy to, to, to share with you the experience of the house and how uh, important for many years the house, and, and still is, has a very special significance because of what we learned about the house. Not at the time when we bought it, but after. It was a very interesting part of the story. Um, we bought the house in 1994. I was uh, hired by Michigan State after a postdoc that I had here in the university. And I was ready to go back to my tenure track position in Beloit College, which is in the south part of Wisconsin. When I was offered the, the position, not here in the College of Communication, Arts and Sciences, but in the International Studies and Programs as director of uh, Associate Director of uh, International uh, Latin American Studies. And um, so we decided, yeah, this is a good place where we could raise our kids. I, my wife was able to get a good job as well. So we moved the family from living in Wisconsin, moving here. And my kids were at the time six, four, and three. And um, we were living, before we uh, found this house, we were living in another part of uh, Lansing, which is uh, called Grosbeck. And, um, and we were looking for houses, and we were looking in Okimos, we were looking in Williamston, we were looking in East Lansing. Of course, we wanted some place that was relatively close to campus, but at the same time had uh, access to schools. Our priority, in a way, this is ironic, our priority was looking for the schools and a house that was close to it. So we were looking, looking, and there was, uh, my wife counted 50 houses. We looked at 50 houses before we found this one. And uh, just imagine, we were ready to give up and continue renting and then just go to the schools in East Lansing uh, because of the school of choice, but no worry about the house until we would find something that we would like. My, ha uh, my, my wife and I, and I, we own a house in Wisconsin, which was the typical colonial house in which it was very boxy, you know. So room here, uh, this is the living room, this is the kitchen, and then he said everything is in boxes. So there was no open space, and I, and I grew up always liking the open spaces because of my exposure to a old traditional Spanish architecture that was taking place in my high school, and some of the examples that I saw even in Texas where there was open atriums and open spaces, and I always liked that. And I guess that my wife had that kind of same feeling because in, in many halls in, 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 in Wisconsin, there is uh, this kind of openness. So we, we knew it, but we didn't intend it to buy the house, something like that, okay? So after looking for 50 houses, uh, there was, uh, we were ready to give up. And at that time, one of my best friends, uh, who, is a, who is a doctor, works in a Sparrow, he learned that one of the doctors in, from Sparrow was l selling his house, her house because she was moving to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, the, she was putting like, a, you're not going to believe it, ads in the, the hospital, okay, with house for sale and stuff like that. So he grabbed one of the pamphlets or the little things that they put on the wall and then uh, show it to me. He showed it to me, he didn't show it to my wife. He showed it to me and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna look into the house from the outside. And I drove, uh, this is in a Glencairn area, which is a very nice uh, colonial, if you will, traditional, but beautiful with a lot of heritage, 
uh, neighborhood in East Lansing. So uh, we went over there, uh, and then all of a sudden, I see this house, and I see the big windows, and I see the, the, the construction that it was very modern, so it didn't fit the, the traditional pattern. So I was thinking, well, this has possibilities. And then at that particular moment, I wasn't even thinking about any significance in the value of the house as having some architectural elements. At that time, I wasn't. I was just, okay, this looks like a, something that we would entertain. Um, I asked my wife, and the first impression that she has is that she didn't like it, that it was kind of like, well, from the outside, we didn't go inside. So she said, no, it looks very, it looks big, but I don't know, it doesn't have like a special personality. That was the first impression that she had. So I said, what about, what about it? we see it from the inside? And then we make a decision, and she said, okay. We call, and uh, I told the doctor that another doctor give me her information. So we went to see the house, and when we enter, it's like, oh my God. And my wife, who was the first that had the negative reaction from the outside, when she was inside the house, she's like, no, this is, this is it. This is the house. This is something that... I would love to, I would like to live in. Um, I keep looking into the house and I really like it. And it has a ton of space, 32, it's 32, uh, it's, uh, 3,200 square feet, which is quite a bit. And um, it has four bedrooms plus a studio, three bathrooms uh, and so forth. So. And the house was going and going. When we were touring the house, it was like, where is the ending of the house? Because it was a ton of living space. And the personality of the house was amazing. So that's what we liked. So then I, um, we start uh, the negotiation. The price was a little bit high, but uh, something that it was meant to be, if you will, is that the, the doctor and his uh, her spouse needed to move to Grand Rapids within 90 days, I think that that was the time. So um, we, we agree on a price, ultimately, that was closer to my uh, benchmark than their benchmark, and we bought it. When I bought it, I knew that the house had some personality related to Frank Lloyd Wright. And I told him, and he says, yeah, 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 the people are telling me that, and, but they live in the house only for three years. So apparently they didn't dig out too much information about the house. Um, so that was it. Um, then uh, we moved to in. Uh, and then I was more persuaded that the house had some kind of a connection, whether direct or indirect, to Frank Lloyd Wright. And uh, one of our neighbors, actually, she said, well, let me tell you this. Uh, uh, we have been living in their house uh, at that time almost 30 years. So they knew the history of the house. And they said, oh, uh, let me tell you what uh, your house is. Your house originally was designed by one of the architects that built the houses for Frank Lloyd Wright here in Michigan. Um, obviously, it's not a Frank Lloyd Wright house, but it's the architect that built it. And there is uh, two house, three houses in East Lansing, and the other house is across almost uh, a little bit to the right, but across the street from my house. And the other one is behind my house, and that's it. So we said, oh, okay. So um, in, when I was living, and this is a, an important context, when I live in Wisconsin, I always was attracted by a Frank Lloyd Wright. Why? Because uh, in Madison, uh, there is a house. And I like the architecture. And in Milwaukee also, in, as, as in Chicago. So I visited all of those places, and I knew the style that he had in his architecture. That's why I already 
made the connection that there was something in there. So when the neighbor told us that, it's like, oh, this is great, so let me ask, start digging more about the house and so forth. We learned later uh, from some other uh, neighbors, and it was interesting, we were hosting a party uh, for a fundraiser, um, and one of the uh, guests was a realtor uh, in the early 80s, and she knew the owner, who was the vice president of a bank in East Lansing, and he ordered an expansion of the house because if you see the house that is behind mine, which is called, is, is the uh, twin of my house or originally, uh, now if you see them together, they don't look alike. But this person who worked at the bank did an addition into the house, so he added almost double, no, well, more than double of the square footage uh, to make the addition into the house. So that's why uh, some parts of the house, especially the one that faces south, uh, some sections are, are boxy uh, because there was an addition. But he was trying to put it in the context of following the architecture that the house had originally. And they did a very good job. We love the house, we live in the house. So then I get more information again. Uh, I get into the notion that uh, um, the house, uh, the architect uh, was probably not finished with his degree, but was one of the architects that worked with the firm that was building the houses with Frank Roy Wright when he was here in Michigan. So it was the group, as you know, uh, the architectural firms are groups, okay, so there is one architect, the main architect that signs, and then there is a group of other junior architects that are working with him. So my guess is it was one of the junior architects, the one that was working with him, that uh, worked in the house in Okimos. Because if you see the house in Okimos, which is registered as Frank Lloyd Wright, and if you see the house that is across my, my street in Roxburgh, um, the house is relatively similar, except it has more concrete walls, uh, but the house is almost alike. Um, but then when they build this one, they are actually following a more open space and more open uh, concept that it was actually uh, popular among people who like modern or contemporary architecture. Um, one of the things that I was mentioning to you is that when my kids were growing up, eh, most of his friends love our house because we have two staircases access. The first, the, the one that is at the entrance, but then in the back of the house, we have a second staircase, and uh, which is beautiful. So the kids love to go into different, uh, using different staircases to go up. But then the, uh, the, most of my children friends they were living in boxy houses. So when they came to our house and they see the open space and everything, it was like, this was the most amazing, cool house. And my kids were told that was the coolest house. And the, for them, it was their house, so they couldn't contextualize it until they were growing up. So my daughter, when uh, she went to uh, college, she was in, uh, she attended uh, Dartmouth uh, College in New Hampshire. And there is a lot of architecture over there that has some colonial slash hybrid things with modern, modern concepts. And, and she now appreciates that and loves that and likes that. And she really is much in, in love with it. Uh, my son, uh, my own, no, not the oldest, but the middle son, he just loved that kind of architecture. He said, my house is going to be open space. And I said, I said, see what you're talking about? You're defining the house that we have over there in Roxburgh. And he said, well, I like it. So I think that the, those two are very inclined to, whenever they're going to get a house, they're going to be in an open concept the same way that the place that they grew up in. Uh, my oldest son is a little bit less 
attentive to those kind of things. So he's like, no, that's okay. Any, any house is okay as long as it has a very nice air conditioning. So he's like, I beg your pardon? <laughs> so he doesn't care too much about the, uh, the artistic, architectural functionality, the combination and the blending of space and form that I think that we have learned to like it because of in, in the space that we, we know it. So as I told you, at the beginning, we didn't know that the house had all of this uh, story and this, all these very interesting background and past because we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that. That's such a spectacular story. Yeah. Uh, for buying a house, I'm sure it was worth it. And uh, talking about the number of years you've stayed in the house, you were mentioning that you were there for almost 15 years. Uh, 20. 20, 20, wow. 20 years. So uh, this kind of design, how do you think it affected your family dynamic psychologically, mm -hmm. if it did? Um, we talk about it. We talk about it because most of my my three kids are in the health health sciences, and we talk about it. We we talk about how whenever we hosted family or friends in our house, everybody was confined by the kitchen and by the uh, not the formal dining room, but in the informal dining room that it was attached to the kitchen. Uh, and for them, it's not a question mark to see that uh, there is always going to be a space in which you are next to the kitchen and everybody congregates around it because they saw it as natural place. So um, I think that uh, that has been one of the interesting features because they, now they compare themselves, for instance, with uh, their significant others who have a um, completely different experience in which everything was very compartmentalized and very space-defined uh, element that for uh, my kids is not even, a, it's like, well, the kitchen is a center for everything, so we combine and do everything there. Um, while other kids is like, no, well, why you don't have walls in here? There should be a wall in here. <laughs> why you need to see me cooking? And it's like, no, uh, this should be part of the combination. Um, they also grew up with a sense of pride. They didn't expect it, and I didn't expect either, that their uh, peers, all of their friends and so forth, they would say, wow, this is the coolest house that I ever made. So that created also a sense of um, assurance, the self of confidence. Uh, and I think that indirectly, uh, put uh, an imprint in my kids that recognize that at least their parents have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> That's always nice yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they were very proud that his pictures of all of us doing activities in the house, in and out, and everybody loved the house. There was no one who could come into the house that was invited by my kids that they wouldn't say, wow, this is unbelievable. In terms of my wife and I, it was uh, the situation that we, uh, I guess that I, we always loved the open space. And actually, in a second house that we bought, uh, precisely one of the things that we were attracted to the house it was the open space concept. So the ceilings are cathedral ceilings and so forth. 